Hi, this video is about the design and construction of the IV Swinger. This is an IV Curve Tracer. There is another video which is a demo and it is, it's expected that you've uh, watched that before you watch this video. Um, so I'm just going to try to discuss uh, something about the design, but it's not going to be enough detail for anybody to actually replicate it. Um, and for that I will be posting sort of detailed documentation at some point uh, in the public domain. So, first thing to talk about is just sort of what the major subsystems are. Um, there's the load bank, uh, there's the instrumentation, which is the ammeter and voltmeter, um, there's the computer, which drives the whole thing, then we've got power supply, which is really just a battery pack, and the enclosure. Okay, first I'll talk about the load bank. <clears throat> um, the main loads are these uh, 12 volt DC immersion coils. Uh, you can get them on eBay for uh, under $3 from Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Um, they're rated at 120 watts. Um, and since it's 12 volt DC, that translates to uh, a current handling ability of 10 amps and they should be about 1.2 ohms. Turns out they're really more like 0.8 ohms to 0.9 ohms. Not super precise, but that's not important. Um, the other <coughs> load bank element is these 50 watt 6 ohm uh, resistors, which are used for some automotive purpose. I think I got them on Amazon. Um, the purpose of these is for the low current um, and low power tail part of the, the curve where there's you need more resistance just to get more uh, distance separation between the data points. Um, also use these sometimes at the beginning of the chain uh, in cases where the current's very low uh, or the, the current's very low relative to the voltage so um, you sort of need some resistance to the beginning of the chain to push that those uh, finer grain data points out to the knee of the curve. The other sort of component of the, um, the load chain is heat sinks, which uh, for the, the coils, they say they are uh, around this aluminum bar, which actually needs a little bit of aluminum foil over it to get the diameter large enough to be a tight fit. Um, it's important that <coughs> the bars are aluminum and nothing with iron in it, like steel, because that uh, would actually increase the inductance of the loads, and inductance is our enemy as far as switching and uh, causing arcs, since this is DC power. Um, the power resistors down here, they're just on more of a standard aluminum heatsink. Uh, these I bought, um, I think, on, on Amazon or eBay, but they're intended for uh, some kind of uh, aquarium cooling, aquarium uh, light lighting cooling. Um, then sort of the other part of the load chain, load bank, are the relays. Those are the little blue boxes down there. Um, they are, <clears throat> there are two eight relay modules. Um, they are only about $7 on eBay. Uh, it's amazing, I don't know how they sell them for that little, they obviously come from China. Um, another sort of part of that design is these snubbers, which are capacitors and resistors in series that are across the context of the relay that uh, that open and that's to attempt to suppress some of this arcing that can happen and really uh, shorten the life of the relays um, and they absorb the energy that is stored in the inductance or in the magnetic field of the inductive loads. Uh, this switch here is sort of part of the load chain. Um, it's a double pole, single throw switch, uh, which breaks or makes the um, 
the circuit through the, the load. It's double pole, single throw, so that the other side of it actually is able to signal to the computer and the software uh, the state of that switch, whether it's open or closed. Uh, this switch, I also have a snubber on that, so a capacitor and resistor across it. Turns out right at the moment that's not needed because I use one of the relays to open the, the circuit before this is used to, <coughs> to open it at the end of the test. Okay, now I'll talk about the instrumentation. Um, so once you've got a load bank and a way to control that, uh, you also need a way to take the measurements at each of the data points. So that's going to be sort of two components. One is a voltmeter, measure, measure the volt voltage, and the other is an ammeter to measure the current. Um, both of those use uh, analog to digital uh, converter, which is um, right there on this little circuit board. Um, this is an ADS 1115 ADC. Um, and it has a <coughs> limited range of voltages that it can um, convert into a digital representation and that only goes to between 0 and 5 volts so uh, we need to actually use a voltage divider to divide the, the voltage down since we're dealing with higher voltages coming from the panel. Um, so that's just a, a simple voltage divider with, with resistors. Um, the ammeter, uh, you know, there are a couple ways to do an ammeter. One is a Hall effect sensor, um, but that is not a good choice for this because we've got a bunch of uh, magnetic fields running around here, most of which are really, uh, I think, coming from the, the relays. The relays are um, a little electromagnet that physically <laughs> switches uh, the contacts from one point to the other, and when you've got all those relays activated, even I think when you only have one, there's enough of a, a magnetic field that it throws the Hall effect sensor off. So instead of using a Hall effect ammeter, meter, we use a shunt resistor. That's this over on this side of the, the case. Um, what that is is a precise but very low resistance resistor. Um, and by measuring the voltage across that, uh, we're able to calculate the current just using Ohm's law. Um, that's called a shunt resistor, I think I mentioned that. So that's the instrumentation. Okay, the next piece of the puzzle is the computer. Um, that is a Raspberry Pi single board computer here, which uh, Raspberry Pi is a very popular little device now. Uh, millions and millions of them out there now. Um, and it runs Linux, uh, and one of the things that makes it so cool and popular is that it has these pins called GPIO pins um, that allow you to observe and control uh, other devices. Um, there aren't enough of them actually to control as many things as we want to. We've got 16 relays, so there's actually this little uh, expansion board that plugs into the GPIO pins and um, that's called a slice of Pi O. Um, it's the name of the, the little board that I bought. It basically just has a chip on it called an MCP 23017 which uh, you control using I, the I squared C bus of the Raspberry Pi and it allows you to uh, to basically expand the number of um, number of pins that you can control. So we use that only for the control of the 16 relays. So it, it has 16 um, pins that uh, are in addition to the GPIO pins that the Raspberry Pi has. And the other ones we use for things like the LCD display and the um, uh, sensor sensing of the switch and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the LCD display <coughs> is sort of part of the compute, uh, part of the design, and software controls that with uh, through GPIO pins. 
Uh, there on the back here is this uh, piezo buzzer uh, that's used to get the user's attention. Um, there, right here is a little circuit board. You can see that has a battery on it. That's a real-time clock. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have a native uh, battery-backed clock, so when you've got it, don't have it connected to the internet um, in any way, it has no way of setting its time of day. And since we use the time of day to uh, timestamp all the results, uh, we need some way to have at least a, a rough time of day. It does drift after a while if it hasn't been connected to the internet for a while. Um, and then of course there's software that runs on this. Uh, and the software is written in Python and it basically, you know, steps things through the, the sequence of, of adding loads. It reads the values from the voltmeter and the ammeter. It writes messages to the LCD display, uh, controls the buzzer, and all that kind of stuff. So all that's left really is uh, <coughs> power supply. Um, which is this battery pack down here. This is a Easyac brand 12,000 milliamp hour uh, battery pack, which you know is intended for people to recharge their cell phones or run their iPad and that sort of thing. Uh, it has USB ports, and so those are used to connect to the Raspberry Pi, which is the one thing that it powers. But uh, the other thing that actually needs a lot of power are the relays because again they are um, little electromagnets there and that actually takes a fair amount of power to energize those and when you've got 16 of them all in the energized active state uh, it's actually drawing a fair amount of power so um, battery pack needs to be able to handle that and last but not least is really just this enclosure um, this is not meant for practicality it's more meant uh, to allow you to see what's inside, which is a lot cooler looking than if it had just been a closed black box. Um, and this uh, was about $20 on eBay, and its real intended use is as a display case for little miniature airplanes. So that's just a really broad brush uh, overview of the design. As I said, I will be posting uh, detailed design information in the public domain at some point, but I haven't uh, actually written that yet. So I'll update the this video with the information of where that is once I've done that.